Hi, I'm Molly and welcome to Dirty Moms Yoga. We are going to be doing a series of classes based on props, as props are our friends. So a lot of props that we use are blocks, we use straps, we use also bolsters or blankets or pillows as well. And all these props have a reason and use for your practice. And I recommend out of all of those, the number one prop that I would recommend that everybody invest in are blocks. You can purchase these pretty much anywhere nowadays, but I always recommend supporting local. So call those local yoga studios and see if they are selling them out of their uh, boutiques, okay? But blocks, blocks are our friends, props are our friends. So the reason why we use props, especially blocks, is it helps us with our alignment in many poses. It also can help strengthen us in those poses to make them a little bit more comfortable for you. And then if you are a little bit tighter within your body or you're more of a beginner within your practice, blocks can be extremely useful to you as maybe your hamstrings aren't as open. So if you're somebody that can't really feel the length in the front body in a forward fold, or you can't reach your hands to the floor, those blocks are really going to come in handy for you. Okay. So there's different heights that you can do on blocks. So here are my blocks. Um, the lowest height is just simply nice and flat. So this would be a uh, more of the advanced level on your blocks before you actually hit the floor. The medium level, the in-between, would be the middle portion or just up on its side. And then the other option that you have is completely higher up. So those who are a lot tighter in those hamstrings or even in your low back, this is a really good option for you as well. Now, if you're somebody who is even tighter than that, feel free to stack those blocks on top of each other. That's why I recommend that if you are newer, maybe having four might benefit you the best. But play around with it throughout your classes. You can even go on two different heights. There's The options are really endless. So you have a lot of variations and varieties that you can use your props for. So I'm going to show you a couple poses that are the most um, used, at least in my class. Not saying that there aren't other uses out there, but I wanted to show you a quick little tidbit and how you can use these in some of these poses. Um, so first, actually I'm going to come back down. Um, a lot of times, at least in my classes, you'll start in a seated position working on meditations or pranayamas. And if your class is starting on a pose or a seated position that's sitting back on the heels and you're wanting to try this as an option, what you can do is take this block, put it between your ankles, squeeze the ankles uh, together as you sit down. This helps with the alignment for the pose, feeling length out of the spine, especially on this lower lumbar spine. Now, if this is still uncomfortable and too much for your knees, you have that second block nearby and you can always stack them and sit down this way. So that is one option that you can do as a seated position in the very beginning of your class. This is also what I would recommend. I generally do tend to use at least one as it feels more comfortable until my body is more awake to go further and deeper into those poses. Another um, big one, as we do come and stand up, is forward folds. So forward folds are extremely popular, extremely common, I should say, in all yoga classes. So when we're going into a forward fold or an uttanasana, we want to feel the length out of the front body. But if your hamstrings are really tight and you're already bending those knees and leaning and resting forward, you may not feel that length out of that front body. So if you have those blocks there, I'm on the tallest height here, I still have my knees bent, but I can push into those blocks gently, feeling the length out of the spine while still allowing my head to rest down. So that is an option. And then as your hamstrings start to open up, you can change the level of those blocks until you're able to reach the floor. Same thing, staying in the forward fold is the wide-legged forward fold, or Pasarita Padottanasana. And then here, you'll find that length you can press into to find the length before you come down into your forward fold. Again, always having the option to bend those knees. 
This allows the muscles to relax and open up into the pose a little bit more properly while keeping your alignment so you get the full benefit of the pose. So those are a couple options for you. Another one that I always love, and I do do this quite often, is triangle pose. So if you're in triangle pose, I'm just going to stay sideways here. You can just keep those blocks in your hand. Finding your, your balance on your, or your base, you can take that block on the outside of the ankle if that's good for you. You can also come on the inside before you reach on up. Again, using the height that feels comfortable for you before going all the way down to the ground. Now, the reason why I really like triangle pose with those blocks is I tend to hyperextend in this front knee. And so when I have that block nearby, I feel the, the benefit of lifting and lengthening out of this left side while engaging this left quad, lifting up the kneecap. So I have a nice little bend in this knee without hyperextending it back. So we don't want to lock into our joints. So using the blocks on this one comes in handy. So then just bring them with you to switch on over to your other side. So there's another option for you, the triangle pose. There's tons of poses out that you can use these blocks for. Another one that I've been using a little bit more into my classes, just because I have a growing belly and I'm unable to go down prone or belly down into my poses anymore, is using the blocks for your vinyasa flow. So vinyasa is just simply connecting the breath to your movement. But if you are in classes often, you always hear people say, flow through your vinyasa. And that just generally means that you're coming down from your forward fold into a plank, going through chaturanga to an upper dog or a cobra, and then pushing back into a downward facing dog. That whole flow, that whole series is your vinyasa flow. Now there's variations that you can play on that. And that's something that I've been playing around with with my classes as well. So feel free to check those out in some of those uh, other videos that I have online as well. So I like to use my, my blocks for my cat cow starting out right away, placing those blocks underneath my hands, firmly pressing down the thumb and the first finger and externally rotating those arms, lifting those elbow pits up and out. So then when I inhale, I already feel the length out of my body and then the exhale. From there, I can step back into my high plank or you can stay into a half plank as well. As I lower down, keeping those elbows to me, I can keep those blocks there or I can move them out of the way. Now, for me, you're gonna need to move them if you're going through your chaturanga, but when you come into downward facing dog, this is a big one that I've been recommending more and more into my classes, as a lot of my classes are more geared towards beginners and intermediate levels. You may not be able to feel the length out of the front body. Here's my dog, Peg, she's joining in. Come here, honey. You're doing so good. So when you go into downward facing dog, if you place those hands on those blocks, sit down, you'll be able to find the length out of the front body. And then it takes the weight out of your shoulders and equals it out a little bit more between your feet and your hands. You can really feel the rotation into those biceps, keeping them next to your ears. And then maybe being able to continue to work through lengthening into those hamstrings. Let's see if I can show you real quick. So I have to bend my knees nice and deeply. So that's just an option. Another option for you is that downward facing dog. Real life, you guys, this is just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> She's a good girl. So with that, that's really the main ones that you're gonna see a lot of. Sometimes you're gonna have teachers um, encouraging you to use them between your hands to squeeze so you can really feel the in the midline of the body or even if you hug it in the inner thighs to feel the lift up and it kind of helps to change and lift up into that pelvis and the pubic bone a lot another reason i like this one actually is chair pose so that when you are uh, dropping that pelvis down and back you're keeping those knees in alignment 
with your ankles, either in line with the ankles or just behind. So when you're coming down, if you're squeezing those blocks, everything is squeezing into the midline of the body. And it's gonna allow those knees to stay in alignment with your ankles instead of maybe coming out or knocking in. So that's something that keep in mind if you are somebody who has knee issues, always glance down, check those knees out, add that block if you need to, okay? Out of breath. <sighs> Growing a baby is hard. <laughs> so I highly encourage you to go get those blocks, play around with it. In all my classes, I always try to encourage you to add those blocks in or have them nearby. Even if I don't mention it in my classes, or even if you're taking somebody else's and they don't mention it, I highly recommend grabbing them and keeping them near your mat. Because if you don't use them, that's great. But if you need them and you're in the middle of class and you have to run across the floor and get them or search in your house, kind of disrupts your flow of your yoga, right? So with that, I'm gonna leave you with those tips. There's so much more you can use these for, but those are just a couple basics for you to try out. Go search your local yoga studios for them, test them out, bring them to the next class, and stay tuned for our next series as we are gonna start showing you how and why you could use blankets and bolsters and why you should invest in something like that as well. So with that, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Check out some of those other physical practices that are on the Dirty Moms Yoga channel. There are plenty of options out there for you. Enjoy and have a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you. Namaste.